Welcome everyone to Mount Calvary Lutheran Church for worship. I'm Pastor Beechler, and we are here to praise and learn about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Today we'll be looking at a part of the Bible, Luke chapter 19, that has a very interesting background to it, but also teaches us how we are to live our lives here on earth until Jesus takes us home. Let us pray. Lord God, meet us in this time of worship. Help us to see that Jesus, our King, rules and reigns to this day, and someday he'll take us home. In your name we pray, amen. time of worship. We begin this special time with God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silent confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear now the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows upon them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who began this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As loved and forgiven people of God, we encourage you now to extend that love and care to the people around you, online or in person. Thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks 
as he's given, Jesus Christ, his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given, Jesus Christ, his Son. And I Our scripture reading for this day is taken from Luke chapter 19. While they were listening to this, Jesus went on to tell them a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said to them, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minia. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him saying, we don't want this man to be our king. And he was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first came and said, sir, your many has earned 10 more. Well done, good and faithful servant. Because you've been trustworthy with a small amount, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your many has earned five more. His master answered, Take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your minia. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you do not put in and reap what you do not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you not, that I'm a hard man, taking what I do not put in, reaping what I do not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit? So when I came back, I could have collected at least some interest. Then he said to those standing by, take as many away from him and give her the one who has 10. Sir, they said, he already has 10. The king replied, I tell you that everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. This is the gospel of our Lord. We now make our confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, some of you are like me, and it's fun learning new fun facts. Uh, I have several of them here. I'm not going to read them all, but these are things I never knew about. For example, a duck's quack doesn't echo and no one knows why. Uh, oranges were originally green in color. Uh, the nation of Russia has more surface area than the planet Pluto. A snail has 2,500 teeth on its tongue. 
Uh, lobsters taste with their feet. There's all kinds of amazing facts out there that are some important, some not so important. But today I'll remind you of one very important fact that often you lose sight of, and I do too. And that is the fact that this book, the Bible, says over and over and over again that just as Jesus came once into the world as a baby at Christmas, Jesus will enter this world a second time on the last day. And on that last day, we will be caught up with him in the clouds and we will live with him forever. And yet, so often, we forget this idea of the second coming of Jesus. And so today's worship video is to, to remind us of how we are to live our lives in light of Jesus' imminent return. And so Jesus can come back any time. Could be tonight, could be tomorrow, could be thousands of years from now. The Bible says no one knows the day or the hour, but Jesus will return. And so today we're going to be studying our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 19 and how to live as God's servants to the end. And the big idea I want to take you to take home with you today is this. God promises a relationship with us that will never end. And we say that every week as we go through the creeds. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. So let's get into our text for today, Luke chapter 19. And you're going to learn a fun fact about Luke chapter 19 in a minute that maybe will blow your mind. It has to do with this picture of this guy up here in our text. But anyway, our text begins this way. Jesus said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then return. And when Jesus said those words, everybody perked up because they knew that story. A lot of them had lived out this story that Jesus is talking about. You see, Luke chapter 19 is unique among all the parables of Jesus because it's the only one whose story is partly based in an actual historical event that had recently happened about a king who came back to get his kingdom back and how his servants, some were faithful, some were not. And this story was the story about King Herod's son. You see, King Herod the Great, the guy who tried to murder Jesus as a baby, had three sons who survived him. And the nation of Israel was divided up among his sons. And one of his sons, Herod 
Archelaus, the, the second one there after King Herod, uh, had an interesting event take place in his life. His, his dad appointed him as king of Judea, and then when he went to take possession of his kingdom, the people of Judea said, no, we don't want you as king, go away. And so he had to get on a ship, sail all the way to Rome, stand before Caesar Augustus and say, I want my kingdom. And then 50 people came from Judea, 50 Jewish leaders. And they stood before Caesar and said, we don't want this man to be king. And Caesar thought about it for a while and said, you know what? I don't care what you 50 think. His dad appointed him king and he will be your king. And Herod's son went back to Judea and there he began to rule. And I think he also took some revenge upon those who didn't want him as their king. Uh, another little fun fact about Luke chapter 19, the same guy, Archelaus, is mentioned in the Christmas story. Uh, after Mary and Joseph went to Egypt, Herod the king, the great king, died. And this is what the Bible said. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. And so this Bible is full of history, real history. These things really happened. And so Jesus takes this real event about Herod's son and puts it into a parable about him and about us and about other humans. So let's look at the rest of the parable, the return of the king. Again, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minia. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. But he was made king, however, and returned home. And this parable is to ultimately point to Jesus, that he is the king of the universe, that he is the king of the world, that he is king of kings and lord of lords as the book of the Revelation portrays the might and the power of Jesus. And Jesus was born to be the king of the universe. And in about another month, we'll be celebrating Christmas. And what is Christmas all about? And again, a fun fact. It's about the birth of God made man. The prophet Isaiah prophesied this about Jesus. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That is the fact for today. Jesus is King of Kings and Jesus is Lord of Lords. But many do not want him to be their king. Many are like the religious rulers on Good Friday and Pilate brings Jesus in front of them. He's been whipped, he's been tortured. And Pilate says, here is your king. And what do the people say? We have no king but Caesar. And so we need to wrestle with this very first idea of our text, that Jesus is the king. And Philippians says what our king will one day be proclaimed as king. Philippians 2, Therefore God exalted him, that's Jesus, to the highest place, and gave him the name that's above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, not some, but every, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so, a little Bible fact for you today. This Bible is very clear. Someday you will stand before Jesus and you will bow down to him as king. And will that event be this? 
Will you bow down in worship and adoration as I will be doing? Or will you bow down in terror and despair because you have rejected the king of the universe? Doesn't matter. You will bow down before Jesus someday. And it is my hope that you will bow down to him as your Lord and Savior. That you will see the love of Jesus as he looks at you and says, well done, good and faithful servant. And so we live in this acknowledgement of Jesus, our King. Reminds me of this quote from Martin Luther. He said, there are two days in my calendar. This day, the day you have right now, and that day, the day that Jesus comes back. Those were the only days that mattered to Martin Luther. The days before didn't matter, they were forgiven. What would take place, he didn't know. All he had was this day and remembering that day. So let us pray about this idea that Jesus is our King. Ready? Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to be our King, who rules with justice and mercy through his sacrificial death and resurrection. Thank you for his glorious and gentle rule. Thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit so that we have faith to acclaim him as king and love him as savior and brother. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So Jesus is the king, and just as that man came back, Archelaus, so too Jesus will come back. And look what Jesus says will happen. And then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, your many has earned 10 more. Well done, good and faithful servant, his master replied, because you've been trustworthy in very small matters, take charge of 10 cities. The king is asking each one of his servants what they did with their 10 minia. And that is three months' wages. He had left them. And those who used the king's money wisely were blessed. They were given ten times more back. They were in charge of ten cities. And they were trustworthy. And God has put a lot of trust in you, hasn't he? You have been entrusted with a lot of time and money and talents. Uh, I like what this one author said, the nicest thing about God is that he trusts us to do so much by ourselves. God trusts you with your money, time, and life to use them responsibly. And I pray that you are using your life and your goods responsibly for God's glory. Because there is a reward for faithfulness down here on planet Earth and up in heaven. As our text said, come and share your master's happiness. And there's a special joy that takes place down here when we serve, when we give, when we love, when we put our lives in the lives of other people and our fellow Christians in the church. And then there's even greater joy in heaven. And so we have many people who are discovering joy. Yeah, they're tired but joy in serving God. We have a small group that goes to different public events and puts up our prayer table, and they pray with people. We have another small group that gets food once a month from down the hill and brings it up here and gives it away the second Saturday of the month. We have our hard-working youth group who put on Breakfast with Santa. This is them doing that last year, and they'll do it again in a couple weeks. It is a lot of work, but the kids have such joy as they have this celebration. We have people who worship in our praise team every week. And again, a lot of these people are tired, but they discovered a secret of life, that there's great joy in being a servant, being active in God's kingdom. And again, we have our church choir, great joy in gathering together to give this music to God. Great joy in being part of our vacation Bible school. And so this is what God wants us to learn. He has given us so much. And great joy comes when we use our gifts, our time, and our talents 
to serve the kingdom of God, to serve our community and world. And one day God will ask us, what have we done with our lives? Again from Luke, then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. At the end of your life, God will not be counting how much money you have, but how much you have given away. And so this will happen. Jesus will return. I pray God will find you faithful. This is a Bible fact. There will be an accounting. So what have you done with your time? What have you done with your talents? What have you done with your possessions? God has entrusted you so much. Focus once again on being that servant, that joyful, humble, generous servant of God. So how do we do that? How do we live our lives in such a way for Jesus our King's return? Well, I have uh, four very practical things that you can do today. And number one is this, respond to need, not to pressure. Generous givers are prompted by seeing a need and being touched by it, and then doing something about it. They're not forced to. They don't do it to earn brownie points with God. They see a need and the Spirit of God says, go, this is a need that you can meet. And so last summer, we had vacation Bible school. We had like 50 volunteers. None of them were forced to be here. They came because they saw a need. The kids need to know about Jesus, their Savior. And they spent a whole week sharing Jesus with those children. Uh, here are some of the little tables of people at work. Uh, last March, our church was buried in snow. Three weeks, I think, after the snowstorm, people saw a need we needed to get our church dug out to get into church. And I think 28 people showed up and they shoveled and shoveled and shoveled. And we could have worship once again. So don't be coerced into giving. Give because you see a need. And then give with an open heart and an open hand. Another author said, openness is willingness. And nothing pleases God more than a heart that is willing to yield to him and a hand that's willing to give to him. If one claims to have an open heart but is not willing to have an open hand, something is amiss for the two should be inseparable. And so we are willing to serve and to give of our lives. Again, this is our food ministry. Every month, that much food is given away and more. There's a bunch more in the freezer. Uh, there's fresh fruits and vegetables. And it's done by a small team who are willing and able to take that chance. Number three, be a river, not a reservoir. At the end of life, don't count how much money you've saved. Think about how much money has gone through you, how much time has gone through your life to serving others. Believers are channels, not containers. God's love and grace are to flow through us, not to be held by us. And you see some beautiful pictures from one of our church members. That's his gift to God of being a river, not a reservoir. And we see that being lived out in our two schools. Uh, this is graduation from our school here at Lake Arrowhead. Again, those teachers and aides and school board members, they are giving their lives away to the lives of the little children. And then give God your best not your leftovers. Uh, we're doing a Christmas show with our acting and singing team. This is our uh, Panto, Little Red Riding Hood, last year. When those people come and give this show, you will see them giving their best. They're going to smile when they might not feel like it. They're going to give energy when they might not feel like it. They will give their best as they put on that show. And so we are to give our best to God. We set aside what we're going to give of time, talents, and treasures first. We don't give God our leftovers. We are not blessed that way. We give God our first fruits. And then our text finishes up with something that really did happen. When Archelaus, the son of Herod the Great, was brought back and king, uh, things didn't go too well for those who said, we don't want you as king. Uh, the end of Luke 19 goes like this. 
But those enemies of mine who do not want me to be the king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. I know it sounds very drastic, but that's what happened in history. And someday Jesus will return. And we hate to think about it, but for those who have rejected Jesus as their king, things aren't going to go well for them in eternity. And we don't like to hear that, but that's a fact of the Bible. Read the end of the book of the Revelation. Read Revelation 20, and you will see what happens at the end of the world for those who do not want God to be their king. So to wrap things up for today, Jesus promises to return to take us home. He kept his promise on Christmas. He came as a baby. He kept his promise to rise from the dead on Easter. And he will keep his promise that second time when he returns on the last day. And when he returns, may we greet him as our king. May we live as servants to the end. And may we cling to that promise that our relationship with Jesus our King never ends, that I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We now stand for our time of prayer. Lord God, so often we forget that our time here is limited and that someday you will return or we will go to be with you. Either way, let us live our lives in such a way that we bring you glory and find that joy in serving others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those in our church family this day who need your presence and your healing upon them. Be with Caroline as she grieves the passing of her husband, and we thank you once again for his faithfulness. Be with Vicar Darrell as he continued his journey of grief over the death of his father. Continue to be with Carol and Faye, with Tony and Melissa, Dave and Nina, Judy and Wayne, and Wayne's wife. We ask for healing upon their bodies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray once again for peace in the Middle East and peace in the Ukraine, that you'd bring justice and an end to these wars. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, as we get ready for the Advent season, help us to set aside the coming month of December for something special, for your Holy Spirit to touch us. And touch us also this Thanksgiving week. Help us to see the many blessings in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Jesus, well, all of us here know somebody who needs the touch of God in their lives. So during this time of silence, hear us as we pray for those people you lay upon our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So we say with the book of the Revelation, Maranatha, Lord, come quickly. Come and put an end to this world and remake this world into your image through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Parish announcements for this day. Again, starting December, there's a lot of activities going on. And a lot of them focused upon outreach, bringing people to our church to hear about Jesus. The first ones on the first Saturday of December is Breakfast with Santa. If you know any families with kids, let them know about Breakfast with Santa. It is a free event. They can come have a free breakfast, visit with Santa, decorate a cookie, and uh, do a Christian craft. And that's going to start from 9 in the morning till 10.30, the first Saturday of December. The second Saturday of December is our church Christmas show. And it's going to be at 2 o'clock and uh, bring hors d'oeuvres or dessert. And it should be a lot of fun uh, done by our music ministry team. 
And then Advent services will start that first week of December also. And our main service will be on Tuesday nights at about 6.15. And you can come and have a meal before that at 5.15. So a lot going on here at Mount Calvary. If we can be any help to you, uh, give us a call. If you have any prayer requests, let us know. And thank you for your support of our church. It is now time to receive God's blessings. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.